Before we start this video, I just want to give a thank you to Steven Schmidt. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that right. Thank you for supporting my channel, man. I greatly appreciate it. All right, guys. Hey, how is everyone doing? Hopefully good. So let's drag in our sprint forward animation here because this video is about sprinting. Next, we're going to come in here to the animator and we're going to go to our parameters and we're going to add a new motion field over here. And we're going to put the position of the Y on 2 and the position of X on 0. So basically, we're going to drag our sprint animation in there and we're good to go. So next, we're going to jump over into our animation handler script and we're going to add a bool for is sprinting on the update animator values. Now, the update animator values is what makes us play our proper running animations or walking animations. And uh, we're going to need bool is sprinting there because if is sprinting is true, we're going to put the vertical value to 2 as we just assigned 2 in our animator. So when that's on 2, it'll make us play the sprinting animation instead of the running animation. Very simple, very nice. We're just going to put the H as horizontal movement there because that's still the same. And we're going to jump over to our player locomotion. So up here, we are going to go, we're going to add a public bool for is sprinting. Then we're going to come out here and we're going to, because this is going to be, you know, uh, error now, we're going to add on the is printing bool. So we're going to get the is printing from our is printing in our player locomotion. So basically, if the player locomotion is printing is true, it will be true in that function, it's called. So we're going to go to our input handler and add a public float for roll input timer. And this timer is basically going to decide if we roll or sprint as it does in Dark Souls, because if you tap B in Dark Souls, you roll. If you hold it, you sprint. So if B input, we're going to erase that and put roll input timer plus equals delta. So the roll input timer goes up by uh, time by delta time. Our sprint flag is equal to true. Okay. And then we're going to go back up here again and actually add the sprint flag because we don't have one of those. So public bull sprint flag. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna come back down here again and uh, just here under the if B input else. So if the roll input timer is less than zero and roll input timer is, sorry, greater than zero and less than 0 0.5, then sprint flag is going to equal false. So if you just tap B, then you're not gonna activate your sprint flag and you're just gonna roll and roll flag will be true. And you guys know what happens when the roll flag is true. It handles our rolling. And we're going to say roll input timer equals equals zero to reset it. And we're going to save that right there. All right, guys, now in our handle movement, we're going to say if input handler dot roll flag return. Because you don't want to be able to move when you're rolling. Um, I'm going to change that later and make it if if is interacting return. Uh, we're going to do a refactor video soon. Don't worry. I don't mean like we're going to reset everything. We're just going to reorganize or replace all of our functionality. It won't be difficult. So then we're going to say if input handler dot sprint flag here in our handle movement method uh, in our handle movement method. So speed is equal to sprint speed, and we need to assign that right now because we actually don't have a float for the sprint speed. So we're going to scroll back up here and just make a. Uh, a float just like we have here for the movement speed. We're just going to put it under here. We're going to serialize the field again so we can change it in game if we so please. Float sprint speed is equal to, I'm going to say seven. Seven seems like a good number. It's not too much higher than what you get, but it's a bit of a speed boost. And we're going to come back down here. Then we're going to say is sprinting equals true. We're going to say move direction times equals speed, just like we have below if we're not sprinting. So it's very similar to how it handles the regular movement, if you can see that. And then we're going to put an else here and place the other movement inside here. So if you're sprinting, do this speed. And if you're not sprinting, do the regular speed. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to go over here on our update method inside our player locomotion and we're going to say is sprinting is equal to input handler dot b input. So basically whenever you hold the b button is sprinting will be true and when you let go of it, it will be false. Very straightforward. And here on the player manager update, we're going to say input handler dot sprint flag equals false just to reset the flag like we have the roll flag. And we're going to save that and we should be good to go, I believe. So let's get in the game here and check this out. All right, guys, here we are. Let's give it a whirl. So we're running and now we're sprinting. There it is, perfect. And we're running again and now we're sprinting. And we're running again and we're sprinting. That works very nicely. So just to be sure too, see so if we can still roll. We can backstep. 
and we can run around and we can roll and we can backstep. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the views. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed this video. It does help get the video around, you know, with the YouTube algorithm and whatnot. But before I go, I want to talk to you guys about something. Um, it's a little bit uh, like a change of subject matter here. I noticed there are a lot of you in this tutorial series who have just recently found me, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you're tuning in. But I see a lot of you are very confused or uh, kind of lost in some of this material. Um, as I said before, if you made it this far, then amazing. Uh, this tutorial is for more intermediate, um, I would say, Unity users because I do glaze over some of the subject matter that I would assume that you already have some understanding of. And by that, I mean I'm not like, I'm not hitting these topics to death. I'm not describing everything that I do and why. I'm more or less just showing you the structure and how I'm, you know, forming uh, the functionality of everything. But um, if you so wish, I could start another series alongside of this where I would go in depth into everything, every variable, every function, every line of code, I could really over explain, um, you know, everything. Because there are some people in my audience um, who are very new to Unity, and I think it'll be very beneficial. So if you are one of those people, or if you just would like to see another series alongside of this, it would not interrupt the, uh, the scheduling of these videos. I would uh, do it alongside of it. Uh, I could post that and just let me know. I think it would be very beneficial to a lot of people out there. Um, just post down in the comments if you'd like to see it. But anyway, thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, again, I greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to drop a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. The subject of the next video will be announced below.